What's up, Cryptosomniacs? How is everybody doing on this fine, uh, what is it, Wednesday today? Correct, Wednesday. How is everybody doing? Uh, hope you guys are doing great. I'm going to give a few people a few minutes to jump in here because I know it's kind of an odd hour today. So, if, uh, all right, Anthony Monero, great last name. <laughs> great last name, Anthony. What's happening? Welcome, welcome early show today uh, just wanted to get on and uh, in case you haven't heard the news yet you probably heard it by the thumbnail and know that uh, the two ETFs were denied today um, so direction was denied and um, also um, um, wow geez come on brain work uh, pro shares was also denied so uh, both ETFs were denied um, not totally unexpected we did think that this would probably get denied um because they are um not some of the more reputable names so we we still have hope for the cboe we thought these were going to get denied um good uh, good thing about this is these were still um just trying to make derivatives so the the cboe is actually going to be buying bitcoin which i think would be good uh, potentially could be good uh, as far as that goes, but at least they would actually have some investment in the actual asset rather than um, just uh, betting on a, a basket like the the index funds are. So um, anyway, um, tough day, tough day in the market, and uh, seen a lot of things taken a beating today. So um, yeah, I guess we can just get into it. There is a, a great big chart full of falling wedges that I've seen today. Um, yeah, let's let's have a look. Hey, awesome. Uh, John H. Right on. Yeah, you guys just uh, before I guess before we get too far into it. A um, lot of people gave us a lot of great feedback on the Trader Talk episode from Monday, um, which if you have not seen that yet, head on over to the channel and uh, check it out. This it's this one right here. Uh, Trader Talk live. So it was the entire TA staff, Amal, Jordan, James, myself, Snay. Um, all just sitting around and chatting, trading techniques, strategies, etc. So it was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of people gave us some really good feedback on that. So I wanted to let you guys know that we will be doing that regularly. i um, going to try to make it at least every two weeks. Hopefully we can do it once a week. So um, hopefully looking forward to, to uh, having another episode of Trader Talk Live next Monday. So um, yeah, lots of people were excited. Mark just saw your comments um, yeah, just on the YouTube channel. And uh, just want to say thanks, guys. Glad you guys were enjoying the content. Um, really, that's what we want to do for you here is we want to provide the kind of content that you want to watch. So, uh, you know, if that's me coming on and charting all the time, great. Um, but it seems like that might be getting a little stale by our view count. So thought we would uh, try to open it up and see what else might be attractive for viewers to watch. So uh, anyway, wanted to let you guys know that is going to be a regular one. And um, we will be we will be uh, making that a regular occurrence on the channel. So um, feel free to spread the word, help us get the word out, and uh, let people know where they can come to for legit hardcore TA. Anyway, um, yeah. So let's get back to it here, guys. Um, still, way too many cryptocurrencies on the market. Eighteen hundred and seventy-eight. That is just bananas. Uh, you know, the number of those are, are so many new ICOs still coming out. A lot of potential good projects, but I just think the enthusiasm is not obviously where it was last year, and uh, uh, it's going to be a rough go for ICOs entering the market, I think, um, obviously for the first half of this year and going through the rest of this year. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we don't end up with another two-year bear market, but guys, keep in mind, let's, let's just go through it. I'm not going to play Snay's sad music, but uh, if we go look at the weekly trend, and uh, let's get back here to, yeah. So let me blow this up. So just a quick question. In fact, if you guys want to answer in the chat, uh, how many of you guys ever actually go back and look at the historic charts? How many of you guys, just, just out of curiosity, do you just come on here and, and look at the short-term charts like I mostly do on the channel? Or how many of you guys actually go back in and, and look at these historic charts? So. Just please note here, guys, 2014, you know, we had a very similar run up at the end of 2014. Uh, 
you know, huge volume started to bleed down. Look at that around May pumped back up again, July bled down all the way through November, December. And then it was just flat for boy, what almost, almost a full year. Yeah. Like eight or nine months. And then right around November, 2016, price started to pick up, traded sideways again for a little while. Then July of, uh, of, uh, 2016, pump trade sideways and then we all know what happened in 2017 so anyways guys definitely uh definitely worth taking a look back and just being just being aware of what it looks like in the past because it's it's really easy to look at this chart right it's really easy to look at this chart and go oh my god the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket the sky is falling what are we gonna do sell everything oh no uh super easy right i mean but you know this just just to put it into perspective, guys, look at the shape of this chart here. And then, again, let's go ahead and, whoops, get back in here and blow it up. And it starts to look staggeringly similar, doesn't it? So, don't have too much fear, guys. I mean, you know, not, I'm, I'm no financial advisor. This is not financial advice. It could all go to zero, but I don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen. So uh, everybody says hold or sell. That is ultimately your decision. Um, so I'll tell you this. I did just put in a, a, I put in a stop loss for literally half of my Ether um, today at 266, and I think I moved that up to 268. I 100% expect that to fill, um, and I will be waiting for for it to uh, to go down a little bit lower. I've got some buys in around the $250 range. Um, so fully anticipating picking back up exactly what I just sold. We'll see if my play plays out, but that is what I'm trying to do. So I wanted to share that information with you guys um, because I do like, to, uh, do like to share that info on the channel. And uh, let's see. So what else? Let's see what everybody says in the channel or over in the, uh, in the chat. Lots of, uh, lots of people chatting today, so. Uh, anyone notice now different than 2017 trading now? <laughs> yeah, trading is way different than it was in 2017. 2017 was like you could be, you didn't have to even be a trader. Literally, all you had to do was buy the dip, and you, that, that's that's all you had to do last year. You have to be so. I think a lot of people got fooled into thinking that cryptocurrency was green candles forever, and it was an easy way to make a bunch of money. Um, if you got lucky, it certainly was, you know, or if you listened to the right people at the right time, there certainly was a lot of money to be made. But realistically, guys, this is a market just like any other stock market. And it's just, you know, it takes time and time savvy and dedication to uh, be able to make money at it. So, you know, there will be large jumps, there will be massive upswings, there will be massive downswings. This is just the nature of the volatility of cryptocurrency until it gains widespread adoption. Um, there's a lot of money to be made and lost in those swings. So, you know, we, we want to try to give as much uh, education on how to play these things as possible. So anyway, uh, let's talk about let's talk about trading. You, know, you guys seem to like the trading talk and the trading signals. So let's talk about a trading signal that I see here right now. And this is called a descending triangle. And it looks like a mall has been charting because I got a black line here again. <laughs> give me just a second. Let me uh, oops, come on, are you let me brighten that up? Picking that up. Okay. So guys, it's called descending triangle. These are generally bearish. And I see these all over the market. Right? So I'll show you the guys, the ones here. In fact, give me a minute because I saw so many of these earlier. I need to cross reference and I don't want to uh, stumble around on the stream. So bear with me a moment here. Let me scroll back a little bit because I was talking about these in the moon lounge. Here we go. Okay. So, what did I see? So, let's see. All right. First one was Qtum. Qtum's entire chart looks like an, uh, oops, looks like a falling wedge to me, or rather a descending triangle to me right now. So, we'll see. We'll see on that one. That's a, that's a very macro view. Um, next one is going to be Stellar, and that is in my holds, so there we go, and 
just like that. Not quite as uh, not quite as vivid, but definitely looking a lot like the same thing. These are generally bearish indicators, guys. So I, I would anticipate this is going to bounce off of that resistance and end up uh, coming down a little bit. We'll hope it finds support there at the uh, what is that? Two twenty-seven hundred sats range, roughly. Looks like it's had decent support there in the past. Right now, mind you guys, I'm looking at weekly candles here, so uh, these are massive time frames. Um, so Qtum, Stellar, Zencash, which by the way just rebranded. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but uh, they've just changed their name to, I believe, Horizon. Added super nodes. Interesting, interesting things going on over there at Zencash. Uh, but yep, here we have another one. And uh, what else did I see? Uh, oh yeah, my favorite. My favorite bag, Civic. And I was looking at this one on a much tighter, let's, I think these were like, on the, uh, I guess must have been on the daily. Yeah, there we go. On the daily. So, all those things, especially this one, couple of that's, that's not good. That's showing me the, uh, that's showing me the sell signal there on the daily from yesterday. It has managed to hold its resist, or hold its price okay. Um, but this doesn't give me a ton of confidence. Doesn't give me a ton of confidence. Can't can't push that high up over any of these wicks. Anyways, so series of falling wedges, guys, and falling wedges are I'm sorry, I keep saying falling wedges. Descending triangles. Descending triangles are generally bearish. Falling wedges uh look a little bit different. I've I've shown you guys falling wedges. Those are the ones that look a little more pointy like that. Those are generally bullish. So anyway, um, the all, the entire market around on the on the broad scale is looking like it could be due for another step down, or at least most of my favorite projects are, which is really not the most exciting news to give. But uh, again, guys, I just tell it like I see it. I'm just reading a chart, and this is what I see. So uh, anyways, um, hoping for some good news, but it just keeps looking like not the best. Anyway, guys, um, so Chris Wise wants to know, hold or sell? And uh, like I said, guys, I put in a, st I put in a, a stop loss for literally half of my ether today and fully expect it to fill and do fully plan that. I've, I've already put a buy order in for half of my ether uh, down around that 250 range. So we'll see. Um, in fact, here I can tell you if my order has hit yet or not. Sure has. Sure has. So anyway, yep, I've got a buy order in at uh, 251 right now. So see if I can uh, see if I can pick back up that ETH that I just sold. And uh, that is where I'm at with it. So uh, again, not exiting the market, just think that I can effectively significantly increase my ETH holdings for the same price. So that's what I, that's the play I'm trying to make in this. And uh, we'll see. Hold or sell. One man army says both. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Um, did I miss a? Backed is way more exciting. Well, backed is very exciting, but uh, it's gotta it's gotta come to market first. Uh, Twelve hundred easily need to go away. Twelve hundred plus easily need to go away. Oh, coins! You must be saying, yeah, I agree with that. One man, I mean, seriously, guys, there's so many that are literally just dead projects that are just sitting there. Um, uh, I mean, r just get a blockchain explorer and try to look into any of these coins. Uh, you can find out if there's any. Many of the low cap volume coins just have no volume on them at all. No, they're not being. Nobody's trading them. No, nothing's being done. So they're they're just dead coins. There's a lot of just dead coins. So I suspect that number should go down. Hopefully, sometime in the next, uh, the near future. So, um, Dayon, I'm not pronouncing this. I guess it's Dow. I'm sorry, dude. I'm butchering your name. Person on Twitter. D A. Oh, it's D A only T W. Got it. Okay. Then I said it right. So, it says, will we break 6K? I, I definitely think we'll break 6K. Um, we've been saying that here in CryptoSomniac for, for months now. We, we, or I, I say 58. I mean, if you watch the Trader Talk episode, that's what I think is, is I suspect it'll get down around that 58K range. Could go a little bit lower. Uh, Amal's been saying he thinks lower. And, uh, you know, we all think the potential could be lower depending on what happens. Um, but that's kind of where we see it based on current market conditions right now. So anyway, all right, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. I researched entire history, says Charles Oregon. Good man. 
JK says, I agree we might be in a bear phase till 2020. It's possible, guys. I mean, I hope not. But the question is, that's, in fact, that'll be the, that'll be the crypto. You guys want to win some crypto? I'm going to just call, talk about this right now. You want to enter for the crypto? How do we do it? We say, give me a comment. So the, the criteria for the contest today is, uh, uh, I want to know. I want to know how much how much you actually look back in the charts. So if you are uh, just a, a short term trader or a recent term trader, or if you have you know uh, if you steady look back and try to find patterns and see if they repeat. So I want to know that and your ERC twenty address down below in the comments to be eligible for a crypto uh, crypto giveaway on the next stream. Um, same thing, Facebook, uh, obviously Twitter. Just give me a retweet. Uh, if you retweet me with a comment, that would be great to uh, to put your comment in there. Uh, and uh, that's how we'll do it today. So I'll, I'll get back to that again in a minute, but uh, that's where I'm at now. So let's see. When I hear ETF has been rejected, that's right, Sunny D, two ETFs got rejected today. Uh, Direction and ProShares, both denied. And uh, now there is CBOE and I think maybe two or three others left to go. So still some hope, but uh, who knows when. Uh, Sunny D, self-regulatory organizations. Order disapproving a proposed rule change to list and trade the shares of the Granite Shares Bitcoin ETF and the Granite Shares Short Bitcoin ETF. So that is just posting some news. People in December and January are wrecked more than the sky felt. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I mean, honestly, it's it's really understandable. Everybody's got their own risk tolerance and uh, how much money they're willing to lose willing to let go how much value they're willing to let go out of their portfolio i mean it's it's lost money basically anytime you sell at a loss uh you bought an asset for a certain price if it's not worth the price or more by the time you sell it you lose the money right so i think a way way too many people got caught up in the fervor towards the beginning of the year and did not realize that it's not green candles for all the time every day and uh as a result there's a lot of people feeling the pain a lot of people the more FUD, the more I can buy, says Anthony. That's a <laughs> that's a great perspective, sir. Um, it does, you know, like that's that's what I was saying in the Moon Lounge, guys. I was, when I went through all those falling, uh, or I'm sorry, descending triangles, when I went through all those, I was like, well, guys, the great news is everything's going to be on sale again. So I was actually very surprised. Uh, I was we were watching uh, I was watching the candles earlier on Ethereum, and uh, I was surprised it got back over 270. I expected it, as soon as the news happened, I expected ETH to actually take a little bit of a dip too. So um, happy to see that it is holding around 270 right now. Doesn't, uh, just looking at it, doesn't give me a lot of confidence. It's gonna keep that price. So that's why I set a stop for literally half of my ETH today. So, all right, let's see. I don't mend red days or weeks in the short term. That means everything's on sale. Exactly. That's that's ultimately it. So if you are buying into projects that you think have solid fundamentals, then you really shouldn't worry about the volatility day to day. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, understand where your risk tolerance ends and know how to set a stop loss, is my opinion there. I own VET and BTC and some ICOs. Nice one. Uh, I hope you put a stop loss in your VET for, for today after that recent pump there, JK. Um, there was a bunch of money to be made as of last Friday and uh, it is since reeling back those profits significantly so hope you were able to uh, to reap the benefits while it was still up buying things that are beyond white papers that's exactly right one man army you are 100% correct product first technology first if you don't have a minimum viable product you're not getting my money that's just me I you know a lot of there's been a lot of ICOs that I thought might have been worth investing in that uh, even had an MVP and I still was like mm, uh, I don't know but I'm pretty conservative guys I'm not a obviously I'm not a, I'm not a wild gambler trader anybody who's been watching the uh, the channel for a while knows I'm I'm a pretty conservative trader so um, yeah anyways uh, take that into consideration as I'm talking about these things. Um, ladder in or am I holding any nano I'm not holding any nano um, I'm not I'm not holding too many altcoins at all right now to be honest with you um, but I do like the project let's see what will happen if a new I'm not sure what you're saying there Anthony um, audio output sounds better on your phone tonight Ryan good I did turn the volume up on the mic a little bit so hopefully that helped 
uh, again, using the fancy mics. So it's got to be better quality on this than it was through my MacBook. It's got to be. All right, let's see what else. What else? Stacking nines, my man. Uh, Tomo Chain, yeah, that's not a bad one. A uh, high performance blockchain, also a, a fairly decent uh, potential. Again, highly speculative coins in a highly speculative market, but uh, let's see. Seems like a solid long term, even if the market goes lower. I mean, there's a lot of guys, ultimately, there's a lot of projects that, if you really believe in the fundamentals, are amazing prices right now, right? So um, I've just been a little susceptible to some of the FUD lately, I'll just admit it. I've been a little bit susceptible here and there to some of the FUD and have started to just get rid of a lot of my altcoins. You know, I, I mean, I've been, I've made no secret about this on the channel. I've just started to get rid of a lot of my altcoins and I'm just trying to hold on to the big ones. I fully understand that my gains may not be as huge um, if I'm not at my computer in time to capitalize on a market reversal. I'm willing. That's that's a risk I'm willing to take because I would rather hold on to what I believe are truly fundamental projects and not have you know I'm I'm just I'm not in a gambling mood right now, guys. I'm just not in a gambling mood, so I don't um, I don't hold a lot of these small cap or um, you know just just um, lower price coins right now. I'm I'm basically in Bitcoin, ETH, Monero. I have a few Bitcoin, ETH, Monero. Uh, still got my Stellar. Still got a little bit of Zencash. Still got some BNB. Oh, that's another one. It's another one in a falling wedge while we're at it. Look at that. Or, I'm sorry. I keep saying falling wedge. Descending triangle. B&B has been the, the winner this year. You know, it's been my safe haven this year, but it's, uh, it's, it's been terrible. <laughs> like, it's been terrible the last, what, maybe month? Approximately? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Basically since the beginning of August. It just has not has not so here you go guys here perfect example so here's here's the f here's the falling wedge i keep trying to call it it's falling wedge right let's generally indicate that it'll break up and as we see that happened here long term descending triangle bearish right so it means it bounces up and generally breaks down that way all right ladder in yeah i'm i'm laddering in i'm laddering in to more eth if that is that's mine at ETH, um i don't know there's a few like i said zero exchange is one i'm interested in basic attention token is one i'm interested in uh you know there's a few there's a few we'll see we'll see what happens all right let's see neo and ontology still a strong hodl uh altcoins guys no altcoins are a strong hodl for me i like ontology i like neo um i've i've uh I'm not holding any NEO at all right now. Ontology is uh, definitely in my keep an eye on it coins. Uh, lots of people in the Moon Lounge have been trading it and uh, to, to healthy profit last week, uh, but I don't, I don't have any currently now. All right, let's see. Did you finally get rid of your LTC? Hey, you know what's gonna be funny? Actually, let's talk about this right now, guys. How many of you guys are in San Francisco? Anybody? Anybody in the Bay Area? How many guys go to conferences? I'm gonna be speaking at three different events uh, next month in September in the Bay Area. Um, hold on a second here, and I'll actually tell you what these are right now. Let me just get into my email. Bear with me just a moment here, guys. But I got three different events, and the reason I mention this is because uh, I'm so very excited about this. So, so very excited. I'm speaking on, I'm speaking, that Litecoin is doing an event, and I'm speaking on a panel there. And uh, the conference organizer said I might get to talk to Charlie Lee, so that ought to be interesting. That ought to be interesting, right? So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I, I, I would I would love the chance to just have a conversation with them. Uh, for the record, guys, as a person, I bear Charlie Lee absolutely no ill will. I don't know the guy. Um, I liked a lot of the things that he had to say right up until he said, "If you can't handle Litecoin at three, or you know, don't buy it at three fifty. If you can't handle it going down to three dollars, uh, that's when I started to feel a little sore about Charlie Lee. But uh, that was just purely from a, a business standpoint. So I'm interested to actually have the potential to have a conversation with the guy. So uh, yeah, I will be at uh, the Litecoin Summit. I will be at Block World. Um, and I guess there's, okay, so it's two panels at the Litecoin Summit. 
and then uh, potentially they, uh, there may be another event going on at Stanford for um, people that are at Stanford. So they said I, I may be able to go into that. So anyways, I'll keep you guys posted on that. That's coming up next month. Um, yeah, that's coming up next month. What do I think about Coinbase Wallet? I think I'd rather have Monarch Wallet. Why? Why, why let Coinbase hold my keys? Why let Coinbase, why let any centralized place hold my private keys? Why? Nah, I'm all set. I'll keep my private keys, thanks. Yeah, Charlie Lee sold those like, I, exactly, that's what I'm talking about. He said that, he said, first he said, uh, if you can't handle it at three dollars, don't buy it at three hundred and fifty. And then he sold all of his Litecoin, saying that it was a conflict of interest for him to hold his own project. I'm not sure how that's a conflict of interest, because if you are working on the company and you are invested in the company and you are building the company and you have some skin in the game, I would expect that you're going to work a little bit harder because you have an investment in the company, your Litecoin, or you know your stock options if you're a, a traditional C-level, uh, you know CEO of a major financial corporation your stock options so that you have an extra incentive to make the company do better uh charlie lee stated that it was a conflict of interest for him to continue to hold his litecoin and thus donated all of his litecoin to his litecoin foundation to me that sounds like a wealthy person's maneuver to dodge tax liability and also to be able to uh step out at the high that's that's exactly what i plan to ask him i mean i you know and he could punch me in the face if he wants. He could try. <laughs> but uh, I doubt that will happen, guys. Seriously, I just, uh, I'd be interested. I, I'm, I'm just interested to meet the guy and uh, have a conversation with him if it's possible. So um, obviously, we will be streaming live. I don't know if I'll be streaming live during my actual presentation. Maybe I can talk one of my team members into coming along with me. Um, but for anybody who will be in San Francisco, I am going to be doing a giveaway um, in case anybody's interested in coming to the uh coming to the conference with me i can i can potentially get you into that so planning to do a giveaway um so if you're interested in that let me know um all right what else what else boy look at this this is the bottom will not close below six thousand <laughs> okay maybe but it's been below six thousand already several times so what are we talking about what it come on man uh it's good that's good but maybe maybe you're right i hope you're right i mean you know people have been saying that the miners won't let it get below this because the mining profitability goes away we'll see we'll see i think it can go lower all right what else what else look at historical gold and compare to btc yeah exactly especially uh if you look at when the etf for gold came in it did wonders for the price of gold which i think is why a lot of people are really banking on it coming in for crypto um let's see what else people need to fomo into the red that's where the profits are made if it's down five to twenty percent when it's back two percent you just profited twenty two percent that's accurate but uh again guys it's well what does warren buffett say be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful um but if you're not careful, it's a real good way to get wrecked. So I have no problem with buying in when it's down 20%. If you believe that the price is going to go up, but I would strongly, strongly recommend you assess where you set your stop loss at that point. So again, this is not financial advice and I'm not your financial advisor. This is just my, my recommendations on uh, how to not live too dangerously. Again, I'm conservative. So anyways, um, 20% profit on vet. Awesome. I love hearing that. That's fantastic. That's that's fantastic, JK. Killing it. Bet you're holding Litecoin. I still got two. I still have two. I might no I'm sorry. I still have three. I still have three whole Litecoins. Uh I got yeah, there's there's one on each exchange that I trade on. <laughs> All right. Cardano is looking tasty at current levels. Boy, I would sure love I would sure love um to hear some more good news out of Cardano. God, they've got all the potential in the world, don't they? They really do. Um, and the pro what the project is trying to accomplish is the interoperability play, if they can do it, massive, right? Like we, a lot of exchanges would uh, kind of be pointless at that point, depending if you could just instantaneously react, uh, or, or rather instantaneously transact was what I was trying to say there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. And again, very speculative. 
Um, but I think uh, you know it's it's still one I'm I'm holding the bag of it. All right, so let's see. Screw gambling with the whales, indeed. Seriously. Boy, uh, yeah, in fact, here, let's do this real quick. So uh, here's the time when I go, let's talk about the Cryptosomniac Advantage, primarily because I want to go over in Discord for a second. So, uh, yeah, back over to here. And um, looking into the Cryptosomniac Advantage, if you would like to have access to all of our reporting and be able to get into the Moon Lounge that I keep referring to, uh, you can join the Discord Lounge for free. Uh, just down below, there's some, there is a... Uh, a link to get into the Discord server so you can join into the free lounge and uh, have access to some of the conversation that we put forth in there. Um, also, you can sign up if you want to be into the full Cryptosomniac Advantage. You can do so by going to Cryptosomniac.com, clicking the little Advantage rocket there, and signing in, uh, creating an account, and get yourself set up. You can have a 14-day free trial of the full shebang. And then at the end of the 14 days, you can decide if you like it or not. And... Uh, whatever you whatever package that you want to sign up for uh will auto bill at the end of that 14 days so um if you are interested in sticking around i recommend checking it out but here is really where the moon lounge shines if you want my personal opinion is in our discord server so uh we've got a lot of active community members in here i mean this is just today guys we're we're, we're this is just today talking about you know uh what we see going on in the market etc so we've got traders in there. We've got community discussion with this. Is, you can get access to this channel right now if you're one of the free members. Um, ICO chat's been a little slow with, this, with the down market. Um, we're doing you know user-requested technical analysis. And uh, there's even an entire section devoted to margin trading. So you want to go out there and learn how to short the market? We are happy to help you have the conversation, try to figure out and become comfortable with those, uh, with those techniques. As that is what we've got in the advantage. So, um, the real reason I wanted to come over here was now I forgot because I'm rambling. That's what I get. That's what I get for rambling. Somebody's question made me think this. Oh, yeah, gambling with whales. That's right. Um, where did Amal post this? Um, so, Amal posted a fun, uh, a fun one. That we were watching, where is it? Uh, watching large Bitcoin orders like immediately after this. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry, where did it? Ah, yeah, here we go. Check this out. So this is super cool. So this is just going to start showing the, the large orders that are getting entered on BitMEX. We were watching this earlier, right as the um, announcement got made. There were million dollar orders in here. There was a $1.3 million buy order on BTC. Uh, as you can see here now, though, it's, it looks like they're just the, the huge dollar sell volume is just starting to stack up there. And uh, unfortunately, I think that we will see the correlation. So this is this is generally not good, right? So okay, guys, more more trading techniques. I know you guys said you like this sort of stuff. So uh, when you see a large bearish candle down, and then it starts to do this, right? And these there's a pretty high wick that pushed it back up there. But for for intents and purposes, this is what I'm seeing. That looks like it's gonna break to me. <laughs> right as I said it, do you see that candle push down? So this is, see, again, this is just, a lot of times this is going to actually be a bullish indicator. Whoops. When it's in this shape. So we might see a little bit of pop, but I don't, I don't anticipate it's going to get back over the end of this wick right now. It's basically, they keep trying to, push it up past this resistance level at 6300 and you know into closer to 6400 and just look at this uh, again guys these are 15 minute candles but you can see it just keeps bouncing right up against it right at that 6376 level and what do we see over here massive sell orders and this is why it keeps so we get you know this is a pretty significant amount of buy volume but it's not enough to cover all these sells 
So interesting stuff to watch on the uh, the high dollar volume stuff. Anyways, guys, um, I think we're pushing up on uh, my time limit here for the day. So uh, let's see what else. What else? Anything else going on here? I got wrecked on BitMEX. Well, sir, I. <laughs> Yeah, it's very easy to get wrecked when you're margin trading. I uh, I hate to hear that. I'm sorry that that happened to you, but that's why I say if you are margin trading, I strongly, strongly recommend doing as much research and becoming as knowledgeable as possible before embarking on that endeavor because it's a really good way to get your position liquidated. And then you got nothing because if you're trading with leverage, uh, it's not the same as just setting a buy order and a sell order with a traditional stop loss. All right. Yeah, Rotary Nation 78 says, truly surprised it hasn't dumped harder after this ETF news. Um, yeah, I agree with that. A lot of us did think it was going to get denied, and uh, a lot of us, I think, are, I, I actually thought it was going to break way harder by now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens by tomorrow. We'll see what happens when the Asian market wakes up, actually. So I'm, I'm waiting for like 10 o'clock tonight to see what goes on. All right. Holding works if you have a really long time frame since you're investing on startups and wouldn't care about price action. That's that's exactly right, Leander. And that's a that's a great perspective to have. You I mean, you're investing in startups, so you know, keep in mind, a lot of startups fail. A lot of startups fail. Um, but ultimately that is it, is you know, it's I'm looking at these with a three to five year outlook, right? So depending on if if any of these any of these speculative projects that I really think within three to five years, if they haven't started to, if, if crypto hasn't started to gain mass adoption within three to five years, then it, maybe it'll be the following wave. We'll see. But um, I think three to five years is about the uh, the time frame that I'm considering realistic to see some of these projects start to develop to where it can help gain some mass adoption. So again, guys, I still think we're really early into the market and uh, we're, we're considerably later than uh, than many. Obviously, this market's been around 10 years at this point. So all right let's see no one talking about uh, no one why is no one talking about australia talking cryptos to pay bills taking cryptos to pay bills i thought that was pretty good news that's all i didn't know that that's fantastic in fact i don't know why james didn't come on and tell us that what's what's up aussies what's up with my aussie friends man let us know that's a, that's big news uh the wh anytime the government is willing to accept bitcoin i think that's solid that's i mean that that's adoption right <laughs> if the if the government of a country the size of australia is willing to take the gamble on on the asset then that's a that's a that's a good good feeling in my book anyway all right i think zero x is ready for a new pump look at the daily let's take a look at that i will do that and then i think i'm gonna wrap it up guys um where did my there it is I mean, this is, I've been calling this trade for, I mean, how many, how many weeks now? Two weeks, this has been playing through my trade. It's still in a falling wedge, but on a shorter term, we'll see. I don't know. It could. It could. Let's look at some smaller time frames than the daily. Uh, just hit the buy signal on the four hour. And that was at about one o'clock on the two hour. And the one hour. Uh, looks like Zero Exchange is getting its little pump right now. I it looks to me like it might that might be coming to an end. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. Fifteen thirty minute. Looks like it might be running out of steam, but we might find some more steam in there. Um I'd be looking to, if, if I was in it already since that buy signal hit, I'd be looking to take some profit right here as soon as it wicks off that. Uh... Oh, wait, sorry, I'm looking at the 30 minute again. Well, it's coming up against the 20 period moving average right now. On the hourly. Hmm. I don't know, you can, you can let it ride. I mean, seriously, this was, this was my trade call on 0x. So were we would have just got stopped out on my trade basically and bought that and it's you know it's back up to where just above where my stop loss was so 
I should delete this because that trade, that play is over. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I think it is, still has more room to travel in this channel. So that's that's my honest feeling on that. Is it'll still have more room to travel on this channel, but I would uh, adjust my expectations according to these moving averages as well. All right, and I think that's gonna. I think that's going to wrap it up for me today, guys. Um, I'll be back on again tomorrow. Um, I should just tell you this now. So next week is going to be my birthday. I'm getting super old. Super old. I can't even believe it. Uh, so it's a milestone birthday. So I'm going to be gone for a little while, guys. I'm going to be off the air from, I mean, you guys know I barely ever come on on the weekends. But I'll be off the air through next uh, Thursday, I think. As uh, So I'm, I'm on through Friday this week. And then I'll be gone for a little while. Because uh, I'm going to go enjoy life with my girlfriend, take a little trip. And um, that's uh, that's where we're, that's that's what's happening. So I'll be gone for a little bit, but Snay said he will be coming on next week. So you guys should get several days of Snay. Awesome, and um, um, everybody should be excited about that. Uh, so I won't be on next week for Trader Talk. Um, if I, the guys may do it on Monday night, but I won't be on. But the rest of the guys might be. And uh, other than that, anyway, I just want to give you that heads up. So I will be gone for several days. Don't think uh, anything bad is happening or that I don't like you guys or that I'm ignoring you. I'm just uh, going to celebrate a milestone. So anyway, yeah, days of snay. Exactly. I knew everybody would be happy about that, right? <laughs> everybody likes days of snay. Um, so right on, guys. Appreciate it. Um, thank you for being here with me. Um, oh, I think I need to give away some crypto, don't I? Did I do, did we do crypto giveaway on Trader Talk? I can't remember. And if not, then uh, then let's set it up for, yeah, I must not have because nobody has put any more, uh, nobody's put ERC20 addresses. So I apologize on that one. Um, so we'll just do it off, uh, we'll, we'll just do it. If you guys, so off of this one, uh, give me a comment below and tell me how far back do you go look in the chart? Not up here, not, not up here in the chat down below in the comments leave me a comment with your erc20 address um that's the you know zero x hash asterisk zero five b a kind of looking address uh so put your erc20 address in a comment uh give me a retweet on twitter and give me a like and a share on facebook and you will be eligible tomorrow for some free crypto when i'm on and guys just like that uh that is it for me today i really appreciate you guys coming on um Again, if you guys want to uh, do me a huge solid, send your people here. If they want honest, unbiased, or at least as unbiased as possible, crypto coverage and uh, technical analysis, we would, love to, uh, we would love to help them learn and love to have them in our community. So thank you guys all for being here. Um, I'm really grateful for all of you. And with that, keep your stop losses tight. I'm Jason from CryptoSomniac. I'm out of here. See you later.